Hi, this is Andy k 4 gkp and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and lesson 15 in the general class operator element 3 exam covering the G4A questions. The G4A questions cover two-tone tests, amplifier tuning and neutralization, and digital signal processing. Which of the following is one use for DSP in an amateur station? One use for DSP is to remove noise from received signals. So a purpose of a DSP, one of them, is to act as a filter. Now DSP stands for Digital Signal Processor, and you can really do a lot of things with a DSP. What it does is it takes an analog signal and will convert it to digital information, which will allow you to manipulate it with a computer or software or whatever. So you can almost do anything you want once that signal has been digitized. So DSP stands for Digital Signal Processor. One of its purposes is to act as a filter and you can remove noise from received signals. Which of the following instruments may be used to measure the output of a single sideband transmitter when performing a two-tone test of amplitude linearity? Well, the answer is an oscilloscope. And this question is asking about amplitude linearity, but another uh, two-tone test you can do is check for intermodulation distortion. And IMDs are unwanted frequencies and harmonics. So what a oscilloscope does is, is essentially a little television screen that uh, you can see waveforms on. So it has an X and a Y axis and you can see the shape of the wave. And what that does is it allows you to check for linearity and you know if you have any distortion in your signal. The two tones are fed into the transmitter's microphone and the oscilloscope is hooked up to the transmitter's output. The oscilloscope will display the waveform and you can see if you have any intermodulation problems or check for linearity. Which of the following is needed for a DSP IF filter? And this goes back to the, the first question we were talking about the different things um, a DSP processor can do. One of them is a filter. But the answers are an analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter, and a digital processor chip. And this is an all of the above question on the exam. Now this is the basic setup for all digital systems and not just filters. And the answers on the exam are out of order. So you gotta think of the process. The first thing you need to do is you have an analog signal and you need to convert that to digital. So this is done with an analog to digital converter or ADC. The next thing you need to do is you need to process whatever you want to do with the digital signal. So you need a, a processor chip. Then once you're done processing it, you need to convert it back into analog. So you need a digital to analog converter or DAC. So analog to digital, you need a processor chip and then digital back to analog. Which of the following is an advantage of a receiver IF filter created with a DSP as compared to an analog filter? Like we were talking about, you get a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes that can be created. And at this point, the point of this question is that you get a lot more flexibility with a digital filter than you do an analog filter. So you're looking for a wide range. So compared to an analog filter, a digital filter will give you a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes that can be created. How is DSP filtering accomplished? And this goes back to the two questions ago when we went over the DSP process. It's by converting the signal from analog to digital and using digital processing. So remember the three steps, ADC to processor to DAC. And if you're filtering by converting analog to digital, then you're using the digital form of the signal to filter what you need. What reading on the plate current meter of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier indicates correct adjustment of the plate tuning control? What you're looking for in the meter is a pronounced dip. And this is one of those questions where it really helps to be familiar with a vacuum tube amplifier, which you may not be at this point. Now the plate tuning control adjusts the frequency at certain power levels. So when the correct setting is reached, the plate current meter will dip. And unless you're really familiar with vacuum tube RF power amplifiers, this is something that you may want to memorize. What is the correct adjustment for the load or coupling control of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier? The answer is maximum power output without exceeding maximum allowable plate current. And this is another one that if you're not familiar with vacuum tube amplifiers, you're pretty much going to be lost in the sauce. But the basic explanation is by adjusting the load control, you are basically tuning the amplifier. And for this question, it's best to ignore the word coupling and just focus on the word load. So when you think load, you want to think power. For instance, if you have a whole bunch of electrical pieces of equipment hooked up to a generator, you want to, you want to define what the load on the generator is or what's the load on the power grid. 
So load equals, well, think power. It doesn't really equal power, but when you think load, think power. So the correct answer is the only one with the word power in it. So load, power, that should help get this question correct. Which of the following techniques is used to neutralize an RF amplifier? The answer is negative feedback. And what this question wants you to kind of get at with the word neutralization is, is neutralizing positive feedback. So an RF amplifier will increase the power of an input signal, and since there can be a considerable amount of power in that amplifier's output as compared to its input, some of that power can find its way back and get amplified through the amplifier again, causing an unwanted oscillation. This is like putting a microphone in front of a speaker or listening to Jimi Hendrix or something along those lines. So this positive feedback can cause distortion at the amp amplifier's output. To neutralize positive feedback, you use negative feedback through a neutralization circuit. So neutralizing an RF amplifier means adding negative feedback to neutralize the positive feedback, and you can do that with a neutralization circuit. What does a neutralizing circuit do in an RF amplifier? A neutralizing circuit will cancel the effects of positive feedback, and this is what we've been talking about in the last couple slides. So a neutralizing circuit will cancel the effects of positive feedback by feeding negative feedback into the amplifier. What is the reason for neutralizing the final amplifier stage of a transmitter? Well, the reason is to eliminate self-oscillations, and for the purposes of the exam, neutralizing an amplifier is eliminating positive feedback, with the neutralizing circuit using negative feedback to eliminate the oscillations. So the whole point behind neutralizing the positive feedback with ne negative feedback is to eliminate positive feedback oscillations. What type of transmitter performance does a two-tone test analyze? Well, for the purposes of the exam, a two-tone test will analyze linearity. And this is similar to what we were talking about at the beginning of the lesson, where you check the waveform on the oscilloscope. And the two-tone test is where you feed two you know, non-harmonic tones into the microphone, and you plug the uh, oscilloscope into the back end of the transmitter, and you check the waveform on the oscilloscope. So it, it's kind of cheesy, but a memory check for this question is the shortest path between two tones is linearity. And sort of like a shortest path between two points is a straight line. So think of it that way, and then I'll help with the question. What type of signals are used to conduct a two-tone test? Well, the type of signals you use are two non-harmonically related audio signals. So you don't want two tones that can sound good together. So if you think of music, if it sounds good in music, it's probably a bad idea on a two-tone test. It can prevent you from getting a good, accurate assessment of your transmitter's performance. So this is the simplest of the possible answers on the exam. Don't read too much into it, but for a a two-tone test, you want two non-harmonically related audio signals. So essentially two signals that don't sound good together. Which of the following performs automatic notching of interfering carriers? Well, this is a filter function, and what you're looking for is a DSP filter. And the key word here to pull out is automatic. Now, digital signal processing can be programmed to do a lot of things, and one of them is automatic notching of interfering carriers. So like I said, the key word is automatic which means it does not require manual adjustment. So the first answer that stands out as anything that can do anything without manual adjustment is the digital answer, which is DSP. And now it's time for the G4A quiz. So take out a piece of paper and a pencil, number one through 13. I'm going to go through the answers pretty quick. So if you need a break, just pause the video. When you're done with the quiz, you can check your answers at hamwhisper.com under the exam answers page. You're looking for the G4A section of questions. So, now that you're ready, let's get started. Question one. Which of the following is one use for a DSP in an amateur station? A, to provide adequate grounding. B, to remove noise from received signals. B, to increase antenna gain. Or D, to increase antenna bandwidth. Question two. Which of the following instruments may be used to measure the output of a single sideband transmitter when performing a two-tone test of amplitude linearity? A, an audio distortion analyzer, B, an oscilloscope, C, a directional wattmeter, or D, a high impedance audio voltmeter. Question three, which of the following is needed for a DSP IF filter? A, an analog to digital converter, B, digital to analog converter, C, a digital processor chip, or D, all of these answers are correct. Question four, which of the following is an advantage of a receiver IF filter created with a DSP as compared to an analog filter? A, a wide range of filter bandwidths and shapes can be created. B, 
fewer digital components are required, C, mixing products are greatly reduced, or D, the DSP filter is much more effective at VHF frequencies. Question 5. How is DSP filtering accomplished? A, by using direct signal phasing, B, by converting the signal from analog to digital and using digital processing, C, by up-converting the signal to VHF, or D, by converting the signal from digital to analog and taking the difference of mixing products. Question 6. What reading on the plate current meter of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier indicates correct adjustment of the plate tuning control? A, a pronounced peak, B, a pronounced dip, C, no change will be observed, or D, a slow rhythmic oscillation. Question 7. What is the current adjustment for the load or coupling control of a vacuum tube RF power amplifier? A, minimum SWR on the antenna, B, minimum plate current without exceeding maximum allowable grid current, C, highest plate voltage while minimizing grid current, or D, maximum power output without exceeding maximum allowable plate current. Question 8. Which of the following techniques is used to neutralize an RF amplifier? A. Feed forward compensation. B. Feed forward cancellation. C. Negative feedback. Or D. Positive feedback. Question 9. What does a neutralizing circuit do in an RF amplifier? A. It controls differential gain. B. It cancels the effects of positive feedback. C. It eliminates AC hum from the power supply. Or D. It reduces incidental grid modulation. Question 10. What is the reason for neutralizing the final amplifier stage of a transmitter? A. To limit the modulation index. B. To eliminate self-oscillations. C. To cut off the final amplifier during standby periods. Or D. To keep the carrier on frequency. Question 11. What type of transmitter performance does a two-tone test analyze? A. Linearity. B. Carrier and undesired sideband suppression. C. Percentage of frequency modulation or D, percentage of carrier phase shift. Question 12. What type of signals are used to conduct a two-tone test? A, two audio signals of the same frequency shifted 90 degrees. B, two non-harmonically related audio signals. C, two swept frequency tones. Or D, two audio frequency range square wave signals of equal amplitude. Question 13. Which of the following performs automatic notching of interfering carriers? A, bandpass tuning, B, a DSP filter, C, balanced mixing, or D, a noise limiter. And we're done with the quiz and lesson 15. So to check your answers on the quiz, go to hamwhisperer.com, check under the exam answers page. You'll find it under the G4A section of questions. And until next time, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.